Good morning, guys, from Burgos. I'm here with my friend, the Pilgrim statue that you guys uh, know so well. Today, we're entering a new stage of the journey. Why? Because we're leaving the mountains behind. We have the plains of La Meseta up ahead. We also have a 65 kilometer day to Fromista, a town that sits right next to the canals. And uh, we're leaving, or now we're not leaving. We're now in Castilla y León. We're leaving the province of uh, Burgos and entering Palencia. So a few highlights along the way, like Castro Jeriz and the Monastery of San Anton. We got that climb, the nice view into the valley. We got a few towns along the way. It's just gonna be jam packed with highlights today. Should I leave following the river route? Should I? Let me check the GPS tracks first. Guess what? It's the river path all the way. Yeah, baby. And it's right after you leave uh, the main gate. You just make a right turn, follow that street all the way to the roundabout, and it's gonna connect with the Camino, you know, just before leaving the city. Always follow the river path if you have the choice, because it is more serene, more beautiful, more in nature, less suburban area, unless that's what you want, of course. Look at this place. With an altitude of 856 meters above sea level, Burgos is one of the coldest cities in the Camino and Spain. Its cold climate is due in part to the high elevation and proximity to the Sierra de la Demanda mountain range, which can bring down cold air. Spain has a diverse climate with some regions having mild winters and hot summers, while others, like Burgos, have a continental climate with extreme temperature changes. It is so cold, man. I think the temperature is like 45 degrees and uh, just with the windshield factor, my fingers are just numb. I'm in Rabe del Camino and this is it. Saying goodbye to civilization in a way before entering La Meseta right here at Elmita Nuestra Señora del Monasterio. This is the last spot, man. From here on out, it's all open fields. Located at the heart of the Iberian Peninsula, La Meseta is a vast plateau region covering around 200,000 square kilometers, divided into two regions, the northern Castilian Plateau and the southern Andalusian Plateau. La Meseta is an important agricultural region, producing a variety of crops such as wheat, sunflower, sugar beets, fruits and vegetables. The region is also home to a thriving livestock farming industry, with cattle, sheep and pigs being raised for meat and dairy. Why would anybody want to miss the Meseta is just beyond me. It is gorgeous whether it's in October or in April 2017. Right now I'm here in uh, Ornillos del Camino, the first town facing uh, this uh, water fountain and the church right behind it. Gorgeous day, the sun came out already so it's starting to warm up. I'm starting to get a tingling sensation in my fingers once again. Maybe it's because I just had my first official drone crash in five years. Nothing happened to it. It only 
hit like the brush, but I was riding and all of a sudden the road took a dip and since the drone was tracking me, automatically it dipped and hit the brush. So not too bad, it's still good to go. We're still gonna fly as much as we can. Maybe I have an orange juice here in this bar before continuing on. My lips are just numb right now. Ontanas is believed to have been founded by the Kingdom of Castilla in the Middle Ages on the site of an ancient Roman settlement that once connected Bordeaux and Astorga along the Via Aquitania. The town's history also includes a strong presence of the Knights Templars who built a chapel dedicated to St. John the Baptist in the Romanesque style. The ruins of the chapel can still be seen today along with a hospital established by the order to care for pilgrims in need of medical attention. During the Spanish Civil War, Ontana saw several important battles which caused significant damage to the town and the destruction of many historic buildings. However, the Church of St. John Bautista, built in the 16th century with a Gothic-style facade and impressive interior, survived. Pilgrims visiting the church can see several important religious artwork, including a 16th century altarpiece and a statue of St. John the Baptist. The town is known for its hospitality and has several albergues and restaurants catering specifically to pilgrims on the Camino. The next stop is the ruins of San Anton, a fascinating and historically significant site for pilgrims on the Camino. The complex was built in the 12th century by Los Caballeros Hospitalarios as a hospital and monastery to provide aid and shelter to pilgrims. In the 19th century, the monastery was abandoned and the building fell into disrepair. Pilgrims can collect a stamp for the credenciales from the small albergue on site which is run by volunteers on a donativo basis. Located just two kilometers from San Anton lies the historic town of Castro Jerez. The town has a rich history dating back to pre-Roman times when it was founded by the Celts. The Romans later conquered it in the first century BC, recognizing its strategic importance due to the location on a hill overlooking the surrounding countryside. As a result, they built a military fortress to maintain control over the area and protect the local population. Over the centuries, Castro Jerez fell under the rule of various Christian and Muslim rulers. One of the most notable landmarks in Castro Jerez is the castle, which was built by the Moors in the 9th century CE. It played a significant role during the reconquest of Spain in the 11th century when Christian forces took over the castle. Additionally, the town is home to several beautiful churches, including the Church of Santa Maria del Manzano, which features a mix of Gothic and Renaissance architectural styles, and the Church of San Juan, a Romanesque church known for its stunning frescoes and beautiful cloister. The climb out of Castro Jerez is known for being one of the most challenging sections of La Meseta. The path ascends steeply up the hillside and pilgrims must navigate a series of switchbacks and rocky terrain to reach the top. However, the effort is well worth it as the climb offers stunning panoramic views of the surrounding area. Well, there you have it guys, that's today's uh, climb of the day, at least for me, it's already noon. The sun is out and we have to go up there whether we like it or not, whether you're on foot or on a bicycle. Just left uh, Castro Jerez, one of those towns, and before that it was uh, San Anton, which is even nicer. From up there we're gonna get amazing views of the entire area, the surroundings, 360 degree view, and then a descent. I started climbing already and I think this is a perfect opportunity to talk about my training for this uh, trip. You might think it's a joke because I'm using an e-bike but an e-bike is not a motorcycle it's not like I can press a button and the bike takes care of it. No, I still have to pedal 
So when I was at home, I was doing about, I don't know, 15 miles, 20 mile days, just to get my legs used to it. Miami is a flat terrain, so there's no way up for me to train over there for the mountains. Almost at the top already. And since the, the bike is doing like, I don't know, 75% of the work, I'm just sitting back here and enjoying the views of the valley. <laughs> and there's Castro Reyes right behind me. Look at that, look at the castle at the top of that mountain. One day, one day I'll go up there. Now let's just make it to the top at a 900 meters of elevation. I can see it already. I still got three bars left, more than enough to make it to Fromista. I was even thinking, you know, maybe I should just keep going and go to Carrion de los Condes, but we'll see. We'll see when I get there. La Meseta was not always a barren and dry region. It is believed that during the Roman Empire, the landscape was covered by lush oak and pine forests that persisted until the 10th and maybe the 11th century. However, human activities like deforestation, overgrazing by livestock, and land use for agriculture began to have a significant impact on the region. Over the centuries, the forests were cut down for fuel, building materials and agricultural purposes, leading to soil erosion, land degradation, and desertification. Today, La Meseta is predominantly characterized by a treeless landscape, with large areas of scrubland and low-growing vegetation. In recent decades, initiatives have been taken to restore the degraded landscape and promote reforestation. Several programs have been implemented, planting millions of trees with the aim of restoring the region's ecosystem and mitigating the effects of desertification. The Camino cuts through the vast, flat landscapes, which can be challenging for pilgrims due to the hot, dry climate and lack of shade, particularly in the summer months when the Meseta's wildflowers are in full bloom. This section of the Camino is also an opportunity for introspection and personal reflection, as the long stretches of open terrain allow for contemplation and meditation. Despite the challenges, the Meseta offers breathtaking natural beauty, with expansive vistas of the surrounding countryside with ancient towns and villages that have preserved their medieval character. Well, and just like that, after that steep descent and then going through the open fields, we crossed over this uh, bridge and made it to the split between Burgos and the province of Palencia. Palencia. That's what we're entering right now. We have like three hills up ahead that are very eye-catching and then a descent into yet another gorgeous town that has a surprise for you. Quick stop in Itera de la Vega at 1 p.m. for a lunch uh, break. I went to the supermarket that's just a little bit away from the Camino and while I was there, I ordered a, a bocadillo, which is kind of like a sandwich. And the guy was surprised that I was adding more and more layers. At the end, I had three layers of meat. I had chorizo, ham, and mortadella. And I also added some cheese and also some tomatoes. So it was fully loaded. It came with a, with a beer and I also had some sweets. The sun is baking, man. The locals, I was just listening to them outside talking about how the temperatures are higher than usual, that this is not the norm. And it kind of feels like the summer right now. I will not complain because, you know, this trip started with horrible weather. So I'd rather it be sunny and a little bit warm. On the bicycle, I have the breeze, so I have the air conditioning on. Let's go for it. Guadilla del Camino is the second town in the province of Palencia. On the main plaza stands the Picota, an ancient stone column once used as a symbol of justice in medieval times. The 16th century church of Our Lady of the Assumption is a stunning landmark that dominates the town skyline. Inside the church you can find a baptismal font dating back to the 13th century.
After a scorching day in the sun, the Canal de Castilla was a welcome sight with its tree line path. Originally built in the 18th century to transport goods like wine, coal, and grain between Castilla and Leon, the canal was a marvel of engineering at the time. However, the construction faced numerous challenges such as delays, funding issues, and the need to build many locks and aqueducts to overcome the area's rough terrain, including the impressive triple lock of Fromista. Despite these obstacles, the canal operated for over a century and played a crucial role in the region's economic growth. Eventually, the arrival of the railroad made transportation faster and more efficient. So here I am in Fromista, it is 1.30 in the afternoon. I got here after riding next to that beautiful canal that was just as gorgeous as it was in 2017. Got to see a boat with uh, some tourists and they wish me a buen camino. Hola. Buen camino. Now I'm in this lively little town where I was supposed to stay today, but the battery on the, on the bike says that I still have 18 kilometers to go, which I think is just enough to get to the next town which is Carrion de los Condes. There I want to go and stay with the singing nuns in the municipal one. So it is early. I still have some juice on the bike and flat terrain. So I think I'm going to go for it. As I continued towards Carrion de los Condes, I realized that my battery range was lower than the distance shown by the road signs. However, I didn't let that discourage me and I decided to make a stop at the town of Villalcazar de Sirga to visit the stunning Gothic style Iglesia de Santa Maria la Blanca. Dating back to the 13th century, the church houses an impressive collection of religious artifacts and artwork. Although there is a small entry fee, it is well worth it to see the exquisite altarpiece, a magnificent 13th century Gothic crucifix, and a 14th century statue of the Virgin Mary believed to possess miraculous powers. One of the church's most remarkable features is its round stained glass window on the southern side, composed of over 1,000 individual pieces of stained glass. I've been on the road since uh, Fromista with a very strong headwind and there you have it, six kilometers to go and I only have five kilometers left on the bicycle's battery. It's not flat, it's just been climbing steadily the whole way. I think if I remember correctly, that is a phrase that I keep using all the time. Uh, from up there, there's like a final descent into town. Fingers crossed, my battery will last to the top and then I can just rely on gravity all the way into uh, the municipal albergue. I guess I'll see you guys there. Let's go. I am not going to lie to you, the battery did go out just as I made it to the top of the hill, which uh, it was welcome because from then on it was just a nice descent into town. Got here at 3.15 in the afternoon after riding for 86.1 kilometers. The longest one so far and I think it will be the longest one ever <laughs> because I was just doing the math and I think I just kind of gained an extra day. So I need to slow down so maybe Tomorrow might be a short day, or the next couple of days I'm going to have to split the distance. We'll see. Staying in the Santa Maria albergue with the nuns. I got a corner top bunk bed in a very cramped albergue with very few outlets, so I'm glad that I brought my uh, splitter. 
there's a pilgrim's mass here there's the nun singing and then there's a dinner of course that's what i have planned for the afternoon let's do one at a time It is 8 o'clock in Carrion de los Condes. I already had dinner, went off the menu, off the pilgrim menu. Actually cost me 50% of today's budget. How much was it? It's in the description down below. I started with the garlic soup, then the chipirones, which if you guys remember on my Camino del Norte, I just fell in love with them. So whenever I see it, I go for it. And then closed it, of course, with a, a shot of uh, espresso with a little bit of milk, cortadito. And uh, I had red wine with the food, so my ears are kind of red right now. The nuns, uh, they sang. We introduced ourselves. This time around, it was in the patio. Just a large group of pilgrims there. The Argentinians uh, showed up at 6 p.m. They ended up doing like 110 kilometers because they follow the roads and not the Camino. So when I stick to the Camino as much as I can, I already made a reservation for tomorrow in Mancillas de las Mulas. So it's gonna be another 70 kilometer day, 75 I think it is. And uh, after that, I'm just gonna head over to uh, Storga. So that means that I'm one day ahead of schedule. Let's see, maybe if I get another one, I can make it to uh, Fisterra. Tomorrow, halfway point of the trip. So exciting. I'm gonna be done with La Meseta in a blink of an eye. See you guys tomorrow at eight o'clock, of course.